This is a one in a million moment. But there are a lot more rarer moments in the NHL, like playing soccer with the stick, making the craziest no-look save, or getting a puck stuck in your visor. The 23 moments in this video are extremely rare. And first, this player was completely alone with an open goal when he did the impossible. Smith and Smith in the empty net. No, first day he didn't do it. Damn, I've never seen anything like that. And the same goes for number 22. Cause in a game between the Blackhawks and the Lightning, two players forgot which team they were on. Bynum tipped the puck, Bishop top the floor, Ryan is on there, Patrick Sullivan scores! Oh my god, that had to hurt. But at least it didn't cost them the game, like number 21. And he overskated the puck, never got a shot away. Damn, pulling up a play that bad should be a crime. Just like number 20, when one play almost got a player waved. He skates it out. And Mayhew will chip and charge. Quick whips on it. And it's in the back of the net. Wait, did he just really miss the whole puck? Dude's really sticking up the place. But at number 19, a goalie saves his team with his third leg? What the? Dude really turned into Superman and stopped the Knights from scoring the equalizer. That's crazy. But at number 16, a referee shows everyone how to give good head. Stuck in the circle, now it comes free and can shoot from a sharp angle and he hit the official. Oh boy, goodness. Bro, dude really took it like a champ. Just like number 17, where one player lost not just his blades, but all of his skating abilities. Quick change blades, which everybody uses now. Uh, unfortunately for Morvietti, pops out during play. <laughs> he just, I mean, he's, every time he tries to get up, the skate doesn't work. What? Um, uh, I don't know how that's even possible. Just like number 16, when a player did something I don't even think I've ever seen. To Kopitar, he'll nope. lock it in. Shoot! And it's knocked down right back to him. A save by Vasilevsky, and he A save from behind the back? That had to be luck, right? You don't see the net, do you? You have to deke him. Like that. Oh, he got oh. We've seen that. What the f Dude really shut me up good. I mean a behind the back save not once, but twice? You're never gonna catch him lacking. Just like you won number 15. Cause in a shootout between the Blackhawks and the Wilds, Patrick Kane had the cameraman and the goalie shaking. He's done it eight times before. My goodness. That's it. Dude really had my eyes twitching. Just like number 14, when one goalie thought he was in the Premier League. Zetterberg from center, diving with the glove was Ryan Miller. Oh my God. One second he's on his way to the bench, and the other, he's making a diving save like Superman. But something that never happens is number 13, where a player almost sent a referee to the box. The glass and out, puck hits the linesman. Now Superman's got a puck and scores. the play on the ice so the puck hits him that's an unfortunate break for Montreal and Kane has the empty net goal wow damn I never thought I'd see a player ready to throw hands with the ref and you never seen a one-handed snipe like this bouncing puck here's Coleman that is scored oh my goodness Mike Coleman Whew. I doubt we'll ever see a shot like that again. What if I told you one player tried passing so hard it caused a one in a million moment? He's gonna see a lot of Aaron Ekblad tonight. Verhage had a chance there, penalty coming up again. Number two, minor penalty, playing with a broken stick. Playing with a broken stick. Yeah, he literally got his stick broken and still kept on playing. That's rare. All right, now we've reached the top 10 on our list. So we got to spice this up. And that's why we got to talk about Kucherov. Because this dude did something that I don't think has ever been done before. With the game on the line, Kucherov scored one of the rarest penalties in NHL history. 
As he comes in, goes way wide and comes in and faked his shot and then let it slide and scored. And the Lightning win it. This man's out here scoring penalties without even ever touching the puck. I didn't even know that was possible. But what Paul Ranger did was definitely creative. Seeing a penalty shootout, he used his feet instead of his stick. Ranger and Inra. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least a smile and exit. This dude literally started playing soccer. That's crazy. Well, we gotta go buy some lottery tickets. Cause one player got shot right in his face, but somehow wasn't injured. And power to that movie made out of the corner in the first Ooh. period. There's a shot that goes up into the face of Nemeth. I think it's caught up in his visor. It is. If that's not a one in a million moment, I don't know what is. But the Dallas Stars captain Jamie Benn seems to have a beef with his sticks. And for Jamie Ooh. Benn, he kind of sums this up for his team is not just once or twice, making it odd number three times right there. Not one, not two, but three sticks? Two broke sticks worth more than I make for my YouTube channel. That's ridiculous. But sometimes hockey can be hard, especially for rookies. And none had it harder than Kellen Lane, because he set the record for the shortest debut in NHL history. Marilla at the Vancouver bench is already looking at the and here we go. Line brawl to start this game. West Garth and BX are separated. Sestito and McGratton back at the blue line. Torch is angry. You see and Ember, he's looking directly at the Calgary Flames bench. So we got two fights going on. Oh my God. Bro really got ejected in two seconds on his debut. That's crazy. But at number five, Connor McDavid is almost as fast. It was the 2017 season, Oilers versus Flames, and McDavid had come to play. So he wanted to do something that would make everyone bust a nut. Have a look at this one. End to end, goal line to goal line. 40 kilometers an hour, and then the shot in tight. Damn! 40 kilometers an hour? Now, technically, that could happen again. But at number four, there's NHL records that'll never be tied. Like the time Martin Furk shot the hardest slap shot in NHL history. No cuffs on the gloves. Whoa! Oh my God, you shoot slap shots faster than I drive down the highway. But that record is still not as crazy as Phil Cassell, cause he set the record for the most consecutive matches played ever. And honestly, I don't see how anyone could beat his streak of 1,064 games. Yeah, you heard that right. A 1,064 game streak. But Ovechkin might break a record that no one thought possible, cause he pretty much scores every single time he goes out on the ice. That helped him reach second on the all-time scoring list. But let's Let's be real, at this pace, dude would pass him next season, and that record would probably be unbreakable. I can't even lie though, the plays so far have been insanely rare, but we've reached the top three, so we gotta juice this up. And what better with the time Brad Marchand made a mistake so big it had him trolled all over the internet. Must score to keep the game going. Marchand over skates the puck, he touched it though with his stick. What's the ruling? The officials get together. He moved it forward. If he touched the puck with his stick, that's going to count. No goal! It's over! Martian! That wasn't even the funniest part of it all. Because after the game, Brad decided it was a good idea to blame his team instead of himself. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, a tough way to lose on a play like that, but... Uh, you know, we gotta be we gotta be better when we have the lead. Uh, but at number two, Connor McDavid scores one of the craziest goals in NHL history. Rangers having trouble changing here. McDavid, beautiful move. Right right right. Man turned on the Jets and flew past not one, not two, but four players. But the only thing rarer than that is number one. Because what if I told you one NHL player went from superstar to criminal? See, in the 2000 NHL draft, Mike Dannon was drafted as fifth overall pick to the New Jersey Devils. And in his two seasons with the Devils, he played just 19 times, which eventually would mean that this dude would be traded. That's when everything changed. See, even though he managed to score seven goals and 12 points for the Blues, dude also had 141 penalty minutes, which was the first sign of trouble. The second sign of trouble was Danton's time off the ice, because not only was he found drunk multiple times on the street, he was also seen hanging out at strip clubs. Dude pretty much spent all minutes outside the ice just drinking and hanging out with the wrong people. But as time went by, 
things started getting darker and darker. And in April 2004, his life would come to a turning point. See, after a playoff game between the Blues and the Sharks, Mike and his teammates were just relaxing and waiting at the airport when two men came up and apprehended him, and his life was completely turned on the flip. I mean, this guy was arrested in front of all of his teammates. It couldn't get much worse than that, but it did. See, growing up, Danton wouldn't have the life of an average child. Instead, he would get beaten multiple times by his father, so much so that he had to stay home from school because of his bruises being too apparent. I mean, this dude had gone through it all, but that wasn't everything. Because later, Mike would also explain that the house he was living in would reek of drugs. He would barely get the brush his teeth, and there was no affection, not even a goodnight kiss. Damn, that's actually heartbreaking to hear. Well, this would haunt Mike for his whole adult life, and after turning to alcohol, he eventually started plotting to have his father murdered. Danton served for 65 months, and he eventually managed to get his life together.